Tyler Fusion Friday. As always, my name is still Phil Brown, and I'm here with NextGen Cam, Autodesk's number one Fusion reseller in North America. As you can see to my left, I'm going to go over how to set up a fourth axis in Fusion, whether or not you have DFO or DWO. As well, you can see we're utilizing an actual vertical CNC machine with an A axis and a horizontal machine down here with a B axis. So let's jump into Fusion 360 and see how this is done. All right, as you can see here, we have our actual setup created. We've already made our jig and our fixture. We have our part. And a pro tip coming off my last video, as you guys can see, is we actually moved our clamps, that circle that we created tangent, we moved it to the left and the right to increase the amount of surface area for that clamp to bite down on. I apologize for that. It's been a few years since I've had to make some jigs with Mighty Bites. Um, great audience, you guys. Thank you for pointing out my mistake. I love it. But we did remedy that. And as you can see, we used that to create our profiles here. So let's start with what do I do if I don't have dynamic fixture offset or dynamic work offset. Well, when I create my setup, we're gonna go ahead and define everything. And as most of you are gonna see, my position is all out of whack. Not a big deal in Fusion's world. We're gonna go ahead and set our Z axis. I'm gonna start with this part right here. My tombstone is square. And based on vertical machining, we want our X axis to run down the center line. So first and foremost, we always kind of work top to bottom, right? So I've set my X, Y, Z direction. I want to actually use a selected point because I prefer to go flat off that face of, in this case, we're going to see an HRT 210, but we're going to mount that to center of rotation as well as that is going to be my Z zero or my X zero coming off my jig and fixture. So we're going to go ahead and just program one of these parts because we have that ability to pattern everything. But let's now actually select our machine. So we're going to go in and we're going to grab that VF4SS. Actually, it looks like this one came with an HRT160. So you're going to want to know some distances when you set it up at your controller. But the idea here is, is we're actually going to place everything inside of our machine. So we're going to use a selection point again. We're going to grab that same edge. And as you can see, it actually snapped to that table. But to make sure, we're going to double check that by clicking on that part. So we have now placed our machine. We have our XYZ. So we're going to use 1G54 offset or whatever you choose. And we're basing everything off center of rotation out to our part. So again, is that's going to be a distance you're going to need to know when you set this up. But let's create a very fast tool path on this so we can see this in action. So again, we're going to go ahead and pull a quarter inch flat end mill here. I'm going to use tool orientation. And again, key element here is I'm going to say my Z and my X. So I'm going to rotate down. We're going to go ahead and base this off this face here. And then my X axis again is center line. So again, X always needs to stay the same direction when you're working in a fourth axis. And we can now pick my pocket. So I'm going to pick that upper chain. I'm going to change my bottom height. We actually want to go down to the bottom. Maybe we want to drop that just a hair more. And now we can see how we come in and we've rotated to machine out that pocket. And looking at this, we could go ahead and simulate this with the machine. So again, we're just rotated down and doing that pocket. So nothing very fancy here to achieve that. But again, the key element, no matter what you're doing on your part, is when you don't have dynamic fixture offset or dynamic work offset is to always set your work coordinate system to center of rotation. That way I don't need to traditionally make multiple offsets per part. So now what do you do on a vertical machine if you do have that feature? Well, this is the great thing about in the case of a Haas or a Fanuc, or even if you're actually using a Siemens control, is we're not going to set it off center of our rotation. We could go in and we could, for example, here use a stock box point and set it just right to the top dead center of our part. So you could do model, you could do your stock box, it's up to you. But again, is based on our work offset up here, the controller is going to do that math when we go in and rotate our part down to machine that side fixture. So again, as if we simulate with machine, we're not gonna see a huge difference here other than my machine is all cattywampus, but we're just coming in and machining. One cool thing with Fusion is, is we can actually look at the info as well and see our X, Y coordinates position based on where that is in our actual machine and how we're machining. And again, all I'm doing is just tilting down and taking care of that. 
but our x, y, b, z position is relatively close to our origin. Not our origin, but our work offset. So now how would we do this when we're talking about a actual fourth axis horizontal? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna delete my toolpath and go back to my setup. So in this case, we're gonna keep that same mindset of, let's say we have DFO or DWO. I'm gonna go ahead and select a EC400 just because that is a nice horizontal machine. And I personally, when working on a horizontal machine, I use Z and Y versus Z and X. The theory is still the same. Z has to point out. Y axis is going to be based on pointing my axis either down or up. In this case, I want to point it up because we're rotating around the Y axis. And because we do have DFO, DWO, we're going to, again, maintain the idea that our controller is going to calculate that math when we swing it. So again, we're going to place this on our machine. In this case, I got lucky. It came right in. It retained a lot of what we've already done. I need to change my table attachment point possibly. Guys, don't judge me on my jig being a little too small for this machine. Maybe we put it on a riser. And again, let's create that one simple tool path using our quarter inch end mill. And just like so, we do our tool orientation. This time, again, the Z and the Y is my recommended tip to most users because we want to be able to rotate around Y and we're rotating around Y because we have a actual fourth axis on the Y, which would be a B axis. So again, you guys have seen me do this. Let's go ahead and select our pocket. Let's go and select the depth again, very quickly here. We're just going to extend that past just a hair so that we're breaking all the way down and cleaning up those edges. So again, there's our tool path coming in from the side. We're basing all of our math off of our XYZ position. Again, that controller is being utilized to do the math for us. So to simulate this, we could actually look at this on the EC400. In this case, our enclosure is a little bit in the way. We've swung 90 degrees. We're actually boring down. And again, if we look at our info, our XYZ position versus our actual working position with everything in this part. What you're gonna notice here is it's gonna look a little funky because these numbers are ever moving and we are doing some Z retracts, but you're gonna notice based on the software, we're moving a little differently versus what's gonna actually happen at your controller when it comes to the mathematics and the kinematics here. So again, that would be with DFO turned on well, what if we don't have that DFO and DWO? Again, we can edit our setup. So I'm going to go ahead and get in here. And what I'm going to do is, I'm again, I'm going to go to a selected point, and we're going to place that down at the bottom of our jig, center of rotation from where we've mounted this. And then we could just very quickly just regenerate our tool path. Again, when we go in to simulate this with our machine, we're going to go ahead and go to see what is actually happening. So again, Everything looks identical here, but now when we look at the mathematics on this, you can see my y-axis position, we're seven inches up from that point. So again, is if our machine controller didn't have that ability to do the math or do the actual calculation inside the machine, I could just set center of rotation, machine my jig, and then machine all my parts from that jig. So a third option that we tend to see is when you don't have DFO, DWO, we're actually going to create multiple setups. So for this, I'm actually going to turn off my orientation. And we're just going to actually set our pocket to this pocket right here. And my depth is going to be the bottom of my pocket. And we'll go ahead and zero that out. So now we're coming in and we're machining based on let's call it G54 for reference. So I set my G54 straight on down here at the bottom, but I don't want to do that. I would like to touch off at the part. This is common for like an op two situation. So let's go ahead and change that to a stock box point or a model box point. And then I like to use top left corner for this example to make my life easy. So again, as I come in with my edge finder, if I don't have a probe, and I pick up my edge, top face of my part, and then I have my actual machining strategy. So now let's say we want to swing either left or right. Well, this is where I would create a second setup. Little tip here is we could actually take our initial setup and duplicate it. 
and then we can go in and edit our x y z right so i'm going to actually say my z is now going to point this way and i'm going to touch off in this corner based on that information when we swing that palette around so again is now we're actually machining from this end with a different work offset so let's go ahead and plug in 55 now and just like that we're going to reuse this tool path just because it's quick and easy we don't need tool orientation at all because we're using the work offset to adjust everything so again we're going to pick our pocket pick our bottom and again if you want to move it a little bit more to blast through the bottom again we're going to simulate both these guys in one shot and see how that turns out so again is at my controller now the key element I need to remember is that based on G55 here, apologize for that double click, I'm actually going to do a B axis on the work offset of 90 degrees, right? So I'm manually either positive or negative controlling this with my work offset at the machine. And now when we go in and we simulate this, what you're going to see is we have two different setups working cohesively together but this allows me to adjust one without the other so again is if we're going to look at this let's go ahead and just make our base transparent and we're coming in and we're machining our part out i'm going to go ahead and skip this way down through and then we're going to come out again we're still cleaning this up let's go ahead and just hit play and get this through here is at some point we're now going to rotate so here comes my rotation, we retracted, and now we're coming in on the side feature. So as you can see here, I actually made the mistake of machining the wrong part. However, you can click those right boundaries as you go. The idea is, is that we're using a different work offset each time to control that. So if you guys like content like this, don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe. On top of that, we are giving away a CAD mouse. I know a lot of you are excited about that. We've seen a ton of people sign up. Link to that CAD mouse is down in the bio. Um, outside of that, Happy Friday, everybody. Hope you guys are all getting off work soon and not working the weekend.